Welcome back to the Art Lang Show. My next guest, real funny comic from right here in New York City. Got a lot going on. I'll be at Gotham Comedy Club uh, coming up uh, August 7th, 8th, and 9th. It's August 9th, maybe, or something? August, uh, August 9th. 8th through 11th? 8th through 11th. Yeah. Okay, so that, that weekend. And uh, Apollo uh, Comedy Hour? Apollo Live. Apollo it's, uh, Live. It's, the, it's the rebirth, relaunching, retooling of Showtime at the Apollo. I'm the okay. host. And you're, and you're hosting it? Yeah. Nice. Yeah, this now, is season two we're actually about to start. This is Tony Rock, by the way. What's up, man? Hey, what's good? So now, so Apollo, Apollo Live, is that intimidating still? I mean, like, you know, to get on that stage on some level? It's intimidating for the people that perform there like i just bring <laughs> but I, as the host, I bring I mean, the, i bring the lambs to the slaughter so <laughs> but you do a few minutes up front i'm sure right yeah it's just it's quick it's, yeah. quick. <laughs> it's quick hey you guys ready to go because okay, that is go. old school show business yeah. i mean like literally rotten tomato type stuff yeah they come to see the the acts that aren't good they want more you so to than they come to see the good right. acts. I, I, it's the same people are going to go watch a rod in his first game back i swear to god it's that type of crowd i got friends Bought tickets to boo him, and that you get the feeling at Apollo. That's what, they yeah, buy tickets yeah. to boo people. Yeah, they, let's go see how bad everybody else is because they, <laughs> they, the people in the audience think they're better. Right, of course. So they come to <laughs> see people they are. that aren't anywhere near as talented as them. Are they all comics? Who you're introducing, or is it everything? No, it's uh, singers, singers and stuff, dancers, Weird rappers, acts too, like, of course. Yeah, yeah, you, got yeah, the, yeah. you got the the pop lockers and, right. the, and the you know the dance <laughs> troupe and all of those. It is fun, man. It's like you look at all these shows that are huge hits, like. Uh, you know, American Idol, America's Got Talent, uh, shows like yeah. yours. Apollo started it people all. Still, right, Apollo definitely started yes. all that. And people still love to just, just the raw thing of like, okay, this guy's going to try to entertain us, right. and we're going to try to hate him. Yeah, no, that's what it's that's, just solid American entertainment. People like to hate the guy that's trying, <laughs> so that that will never it is, it's so get true. old to people that have no talent. They it's will always so hate the true, guy that's man. trying. Oh, because I have friends like this. Your old friends when you get in the show business, I'm sure you go through this. It's like. The divided into two different people. One are like, you'll get in a movie, right? right. And they'll just be happy. You're in a, wow, man, they're the best. Wow, they're so excited you're in a movie. Man, that movie's great. You're in a movie. He's in a movie. Buy him a shot. <laughs> Our old buddy's in a movie. The other half are, you know, that movie sucked you were in. <laughs> well, why, oh, well, why didn't you have a bigger part? Right. Yeah. Why, why, why didn't you have a bigger part? Or you, the reviews suck. <laughs> because the first couple of movies I did, the reviews were literally, the first big film I did, my hometown paper uh, called me uh, the first line where you mentioned me, he goes, and then we get to the beefy, unfunny line. <laughs> <laughs> beefy. Uh, and it said I had all the uh, charm of a date rapist. <laughs> and and, and, Norm, and my mother like was almost crying. And Norm MacDonald was in the movie with me, a funny guy. Dirty Work. Yeah, Dirty Work. One yeah. of my favorite movies. Oh, that's what right. well, <laughs> well, Norm I sees... saw it in the movie theater the day it came out. Really? Oh, cry. Oh, man. <laughs> cry, I owe you 10 bucks. <laughs> but uh, I said, Norm saw that it was upsetting my mom. And like uh, he, uh, he goes, put your mom on the phone. And he goes, uh, hey, Mrs. Lang, a date rapist has to have way more charm than a regular rapist. <laughs> <laughs> a date rapist has to get a date. I mean, that's good. And my mother burst into tears. Again. But, uh, yeah, you know, so it is kind of like, and you're from Brooklyn, right? So it's yeah. like, a, it must be, like, how many people just hate on you and how many people, oh, you know. You have no idea the amount of hate. I, every day on Twitter, you, right. ain't, you ain't nobody. You just Chris's brother. It's I know like, your brother's Chris Rock. Okay, so, and you're, so you're, you're going to throw another level. Yeah, you're it. like in a in a studio apartment with no girlfriend <laughs> there, and I'm the I'm the guy. That, I'm, I, the, I always, I'm the a hole. Can, can, I, can I curse or no? No. Nah, okay, nah. I always text back. I would f your girlfriend <laughs> if you had one. <laughs> As a matter of fact, I want to help you get a girlfriend yeah. so I can have one. I, 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 I say I want to introduce you to girls. I say, hey man, if you go outside and say hi to a girl, chances are she'll say hi back. <laughs> Chances are, <laughs> if you go outside. Yeah. Uh, so, what is it like uh, being Chris's brother? I mean, you're talking about, in my opinion, the best comic of of my generation. I yeah, think. You yeah, know. I mean, yeah. and uh, you know, he seems like a good supportive guy. I mean, what is the relationship like with that? When you get together, uh, no, you, we cool. Do you talk the business when no, you get together. No, we talk, we talk Knicks and Mets right. and, and and food. Big and, sports fans. Yeah. Right, right. We talk like brothers talk. It's right. Just like you know. How many uh, people in the family? Seven boys, two girls. Seven boys and two girls. Yeah. Wow. And no one else got into it. My baby brother Jordan, who's actually good friends with Pete. Oh no, they, kid. Him and Pete, like, oh, okay. they're like they're like Mutt and Jeff. They and run and he's together. doing stand up. Yeah. Oh, okay. Cool. Yeah, my baby brother. He's He's, in, he's been in New York for about five years now doing stand-up. Wow, okay. Yeah. Now, everybody hates Chris. How accurate is that? Was Chris a nerdy it, kid? Pre yeah. He was. Pretty, pretty accurate. <laughs> <laughs> pretty accurate. And I get I was the, the, cool I get the brother, feeling so you weren't, right? I was, I you I was the cool brother. I was, you know, <laughs> Well, you're younger, accurate. though. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, how much younger are you? Seven years. 
Okay, so okay, so, so but you so you looked up to a kid who was getting beat up all the time. <laughs> hey, he was funny. <laughs> he was getting beat up. I was like, it's, hey, it made me laugh. It's a weapon, it is, isn't it, man? Being funny, yes, you, it, you, yes, you, it you, is. Need, you need it sometimes. Yes, it is. I think I really think the most powerful guy in the room is the funniest guy in the room. I think in a lot in a lot of ways, if you, if you can do it with words, because you can appeal to different types of people. Like, right. Even the bully thinks, hey, this guy's pretty funny. The right. cool kids think you're funny. The nerds think you're it's funny. It's how you get out of being you know? getting beat up and maybe eventually get laid. Right. You right. Know? Right. Like that kid in the basement you're talking about who's like, you know, goofing on you. <laughs> like, you know, go out and do something. Exactly. How do you think Twitter has changed? Comedy. I, I, it really is, comedy? It's, it's annoying because it used to be, you know, Tracy Morgan went through some crap last year about stuff he said and what he said is crazy. But I mean, we've all said crazy stuff yeah. on stage. Yeah. But it used to be if you were doing a midnight show in Kansas City at a club, it was just you and those 300 people in a room. And it, it could be like you're fighting for your life and you'll say anything to get a laugh, get off stage and get your check. Right. And you actually build your chops. And everybody was fine with it the next day. Whatever, you just said what you had to say. Now, it's you and the whole world right. in that room because people put it on Twitter or Instagram. And the people that, that don't look at it like like you just said yeah. are going to get that relayed to them. So right. that's when it starts. Uh, like 10 people, the, 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 maybe 150 of the 300 are like, hey, it's cool. It's comedy. It's right. late night. It's 2 in the morning. Right. And then they'll tweet it, and somebody that d wasn't there that doesn't agree with what Tracy said or whoever yeah. said, now they have a platform. But you to, get, and, you, and here's the to, other problem. To beef. Like Eddie Murphy said this years ago, and I, he, uh, I think Barbara Walters asked him one of those interviews. She said, is anything offensive? He goes, if something's not funny, it's offensive. As long as it's, it makes me laugh, it can't right. be offensive. Right. So, uh, you know, <laughs> here's a problem with stuff like that. If these guys start tweeting your jokes, now it's interpreted through unfunny people. Right. You know, you ever have, like, a, an right. unfunny manager? We were talking about right. this last night. Like, if your manager's terribly funny and he starts repeating bits to you from a guy you know is funny right. and you go... That's horrible. And I know it's funny when he said, you don't do that with my stuff. <laughs> and now you got all these unfunny people in a comedy club. He told this joke, and then he makes it horrible. Absolutely, yeah. And it just sounds offensive. Right. Uh, have you had any run-ins with that? Uh, not real. I, I have a bunch of... I, I get into my little fights on Twitter sometimes. I tweeted something about uh, the world... What is it? The soccer? The World Cup? Right. I tweeted something about that. Like, I, I put, like, hey, this is America. We don't care about the World Cup. Like, right. And people got mad. And, oh, my God. It was like, <laughs> you're so stupid. You're ignorant. And I'm like, I don't care. It's like uh, you killed the puppy. Pittsburgh Steelers for life. I well, don't I, care. I, 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 I always say some of the negative stuff can be funny. I always tell this story. I went to a Springsteen concert. I was backstage, and I took pictures, and I was tweeting out the pictures. And I, I made the the biggest mistake you can make in Twitter. I had a sentimental moment because I was like reminding me of being a kid or something. And this guy tweets back, "Hey, nobody cares about your stupid pictures, fatso." <laughs> and it was like, you know what? He was so right. Nobody does care. <laughs> if I had a sitcom, I would have made him the head writer. Like, and then nobody. Cares. Thank you for stopping me. <laughs> you thought about like, yeah, you know, you're right. Yeah, you're well, right. no one cares that I got a shot of Max Weinberg's leg. But, you know, and uh, you know, and he said fatso, which you know just was made it funnier. Um, now you say you, you, you and your brother like do you do you talk about that in your act when you go out on stage? Do you, I, you know what? Do you I, bring it up up front. And, I I've been have doing bits about it and stuff. I've been or? doing stand up for uh, 15 years and I never would address my brother ever. Even when people yell stuff out, how's your brother doing? You ignore it. I ignored it until recently. And like now, I tell a few jokes about it uh, about just how when I hang out with him, we'll go somewhere and get. Red carpet treatment. Right. We'll go to, we'll, we're in L.A. and he'll go, hey, let's go to have lunch at the Ivy. Right. And I'll go, like, and they'll treat us both like, hey, it's your brother. Hey, you know, anytime. Anytime you want to come, come yeah. back. And I'll go back without him. And it's like, who the hell it's are you? Yeah. It's like, like the cliches are all true. People are handing me their keys. Like, go back in the car. Uh, <laughs> like, I was here yesterday with my brother. It was all good. <laughs> exactly. Oh, uh, man, that's, uh, well, listen, you got to do what you got to do, man. It's exactly. Like, you know, it's, uh. Uh, as long as you don't become, you know, uh, someone who gets uh, too bitter about it. But uh, you, you seem like you got your own thing going. No, on I there. got, I got my own lane, my own shows, my yeah. own voice. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm a totally different like siblings. Like most siblings are up under the guy. I'm, right. I'm, he went that way. I go this way. That's good, man. It's, it's, it's healthy. Now, are you helping out your younger brother? I mean, are you trying to? I'm like, what about him, advice there? I mean, helping yeah. him take his lumps. You got to take the lumps. Yeah. Because you know? if you you can't you can't uh you can't get respect among your peers fail. if you don't. Take your lumps, right? Yeah, definitely. A lot of people are really afraid to fail nowadays. A lot of comics, like, they'll get that polished seven minutes that they, they right. have to get a sitcom or something. Right. And they'll do it the exact seven minutes without taking any risks because they know it'll work. And then they just never get better, right. you know? Right. And, uh, you're not bombing, you're not taking chances. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I just saw Chris at the Comedy Cellar uh, a few weeks ago, and he was nice enough to, to go on after me. <laughs> he let me do my set first. <laughs> but then I, I, I watched his set, and he... Uh, 
you know, he had about 20 minutes on the Freedom Tower. He did about 40. And the first one, he was like, you just riffing on the Freedom Tower. And you could tell it's kind of like laid back. I think you officially have made it in this business uh, as a comic on stage when you're okay with the pauses. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like yeah. that, you're, you're, like, I know I can get you back. Yeah. Like, I'm okay with, okay, alone. When you're, when you're new, the, the most nerve wracking thing is the silence. Right. And right. when you're seasoned, it's like, I know you gotta, I, like, God, I gotta get a laugh. I'll get them. They can, they can, they can, you know, <laughs> hang out for a little while. Yeah. yeah. Right. What the, did you ever live in LA? Did you ever do that thing? You yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I was on a sitcom for four years, so I was out right. there for a long time. Oh, that, they shot, I thought they shot that yeah. here. No, we, uh, all of us we shot in, in oh LA. i thought okay why in do la okay, apollo so shoots here at what the did, apollo what did you like about living in la if anything uh the weather the women yeah i know uh, the two w's <laughs> that's, that's about it <laughs> do you feel do you ever feel living because i lived out there for six years i did a sitcom with norm and i did mad tv for two years and i and you know do, do you feel ever like you're losing your edge yes like be, yeah that's that's yes. the biggest problem as a comedian yes. i feel like oh man I, I, like the sitcom especially it's all fake laughs anyway yeah like, you know, if something's not funny, just just add laughter. You know, yeah, who cares? Yeah. And, um, you know, doing a show like Apollo Live in New York, you stay on top of your game. Absolutely. Yeah, you know, you give up stuff. But. L.A., I felt like the uh, I was losing my edge one, and the comics in New York were gaining on me or distancing right. themselves from me. So yeah. I, I, I would always run back to New York to do spots. Yeah, yeah you, you did that often, right? Yeah, you come yeah. back Every, here. You know, like our schedule was we work three weeks and then we're off one. That's that the week best. off, I would fly back and just yeah. do spots. A sitcom schedule. Again, I did. I was a regular on a show for two years, and that was it. Was like stealing money. First of all, uh, yeah. again, yeah, the, 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 that show was like basically. Uh, <laughs> I've said this before. I'd go up to Norm and I'd say, "Are you thinking what I'm thinking?" And he'd go, "No, I'm not thinking of cheeseburgers." Then I'd make an angry <laughs> face and leave. And on Friday, I'd get a check for thirty-five thousand dollars. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, talk about losing your edge. Yeah, <laughs> I was like, I had a convertible. I'm walking around. Going, hey, you know. Uh, but I, I would come back and do a spot, like at the cellar or something, and I'd go, "Oh man, I'm behind." Like, yeah. I'm not, I'm not, I'm, I'm not funny. You anymore. come back and there's new guys in the club, like right. these and guys, killing. Like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, it's scary. You got to be careful. But what you're doing is, uh, and it's, it's live, live. Yeah. Right. Apollo. Yeah. Yeah. When does that air? Uh, season. We start taping sep uh, season two is September 14th, I believe. September 14th. Yeah. Okay. It's a Saturday night. Yeah. And uh, so, how often will you do the road if you're doing this show? Like when I'm, when I have about 30 dates left before the end of the year. So I'm gonna 30. I'm, I'm gonna pause the uh, the tour, right. shoot Apollo, and then go back on the road. Now, do you take pe people on the road who are friends? Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah that That's yeah. another move I yeah. find that's, uh, you know, because I got the other thing of trying to stay sober on the road. <laughs> it's like, ooh, that's a battle. You got to try to find a, you know, a sober comic who's halfway decent. <laughs> it's hard to do. <laughs> no, uh, I, I, none of my guys are sober. <laughs> none of my guys are sober. <laughs> you bring, like, one or two guys? You bring a host? I bring one. No, I bring, I bring, just, bring an opener. I let the, the, the host is usually a local guy because right. I don't want to pay a guy right, to fly in. Right, okay. It's not enough money, actually, to, to get paid hosting. So I bring a feature. You bring a feature. And, and my is it always the same guy? No, no, I have about four or five guys. Yeah, you keep like a, a rotation of guys. Yeah. I know it's it's so much more fun that experience, like that you know Saturday afternoon lunch in yeah. Pitts, in Pittsburgh. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean, it's like if you know the guy, it's go to uh, a game, go to go to you know catch uh, a game. Yeah, somewhere. right. Exactly. You, th that's the best thing uh, is. Um, is finding a comic who might be a sports fan. Like, you know how many pirate games I've been to and yeah. Cardinal? I've been to so many Cardinal games on a Saturday afternoon because I'm playing the Funny Bone in St. I've been, Louis. I've been, I've been to Mariners. I've been to Pirates. Seattle, I, I've I been went to, to uh, the uh, Astros. It's fun when you do a weeknight because you feel like you're playing hooky on the weekday. <laughs> like, you're in Seattle on a yeah, Thursday yeah. afternoon. You're from New York. You're like, oh, the Mariners in town. I'll go see the Mariners. I got a hot right. dog. Yeah. You feel like a big kid. It's great. <laughs> it's good stuff. Um, can you hang around for another? Second? I'm here. I'm oh, here. great. Uh, Tony Rock again, August, uh, late August, August eighth, ninth, tenth, eleventh, I believe, eighth through eleventh at Gotham Comedy Club. And look for Apollo Live, uh, debuting in season number two with uh, with Tony. And uh, we'll be back right after this. <laughs>